Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. And you got Luke. Luke, today we're using another one of your great topics, cell phones. I feel like I have been just this this plethora, this this fountain of topic ideas recently, and you've kind of fallen flat. I had such a lead that I'm letting you catch back up. Oh, That's is that what we're, we're calling it? Yeah. Okay. All right, cell phones, everything from the history to what G actually means to... I still don't, I don't know, know what it means after I did stats. the research. Okay, well, that's good. Okay, so fun fact for you. The Shoot. first cell phone in history was owned by Zach Morris. Really? Yeah, fact. Do you remember Zach Morris I do from remember Saved by the Bell? The, the, do you remember that giant thing? Do you know there's an entire uh, like YouTube channel and like Facebook and Twitter handle all devoted towards like Zach Morris's terrible no, like stuff, and it's awful. all about like how he abuses his friends and like everything he does is self-serving, and it's all I think it's like Zach is Zach is terrible. I can't remember what it is, wow. but it's it's actually pretty funny. That's too bad. Poor Zach. All right, but really, I think he actually was using one of the first cell phones like for fun. But the first cell phone was launched in 1983, and this is as we know it. Yeah, the cell phone, commercially right? available. Right. It was the Motorola, not real surprising, Dynatac 8000X is what I saw it listed as. It was priced at a very reasonable $4,000 in 1983. What? And it lasted for a whopping 30 minutes of talk time before dying. That's disgusting. Like all of the things about that. So I had just this, absurd. I had this buddy that I went to to school. So this was back in, and this wasn't the eighties. This was this was like the nineties. This was probably like Late 90, 90s, right? Mid nineties. This this is probably ninety five. I had a friend uh, that, that, that I went to uh, school with, and he had a bag phone. And I, what is a bag phone? So it had a longer battery life. It looked like a purse. And it had a big, huge antenna, and you would open the bag, and you'd pull a phone out, and you would work it like a phone. So it, it was the predecessor to, like, the, 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 the one that was, like, the shape of, like, a brick. Right. Um, and it had a decent battery life, but the, the minutes you paid were ridiculous. This one month, he was telling me, he ended up owing somewhere in the neighborhood of, like— I think it was like twenty two hundred dollars. Wow! Because it was, it's just he was like having like conversations, like like, hey, what do you go go pick up some milk? Like he wasn't being, it was crazy how That's expensive nuts. the minutes were. Wow! So the very first cell phone, though, let's talk about that one. Okay, so I want to hear where you say the very first. Not cell commercially phone was. available. So the first handheld mobile Ooh, phone. See, I have I have much later dates. Than okay, you, well but... let's go with mine, and then you can okay, correct okay, me like you ahead. always do. Yep. Was uh, this was demonstrated by a cat by the name of John Mitchell and his uh, partner Martin Cooper of Motorola. Again, go figure. Oh, this yeah. was Where back do you in, think this came this from? This was back in 1973, and this was a handset that weighed two kilograms. So that's about 57 pounds. Yeah, you had to be pretty in pretty good shape to carry that. Somewhere in that neighborhood, um, and it was uh, demonstrated. Um, uh, it, it was a short call, and then again back in 1979, uh, Nippon Telecommunications Company they launched the first cellular network, which is kind of crazy that they would launch a cellular network before like things were commercially available because the commercially available was '83. So I, I'm confused with the whole, and maybe it was well, there were some unique... sort of infrastructure. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Yeah. I, I, I see what you're saying. So, yeah. And, and again, that all ties back to that first Zach Morris phone that we're talking about so is you, the 73 thing. You had a different year, though, for the very first. Well, that's when we get into the history, Luke. Okay. okay. I'm not you're, good at the history. Are histories. you ready for that? I am. Okay. So, fun fact. In 1908, one man claimed to have invented a wireless telephone. That man was co considered so crazy for his time. Like, the idea of that was considered so crazy. He was accused for fraud. The charges were later dropped, but the cell phone never came to be. Okay. So a little more history. Like all inventions, the cell phone got started with war. Yep. I, I feel like war is the mother of invention, not necessity. I, I think it is. Yeah. Is that what the saying is? Necessity is the mother of invention? Something like that. Yeah. Well, war really is. So during the First World War, the German military tested wireless phones on military trains running between Berlin and Zosen. Maybe? Z-O-S-S-E-N. Yeah, nailed it. During the Second World War, military forces from around the world used radio te telephony. Like, 
radio telephones uh, links. So starting in 1940, handheld radio receivers had been widely available, opening up communications in battlefields around the world. But these were basically just fancy walkie-talkies. They were fancy walkie-talkies, yes, but I don't think they really had walkie-talkies then. Yeah. They had these. So inspired, this was inspiring to... Bell Labs, yeah. our good friends, Bell Labs. Yep. Check out our episode on Alexander Graham Bell. Good old bellies. Yeah, and to create a mobile phone system for vehicles. So, as we're going to find out, really, car phones, do you remember those? I do. They were the real catalyst for cell phones. Like, they started showing up first. So, by June 17th of 1946, Bell Labs began to offer mobile telephone services on vehicles in St. Louis, Missouri. Not like call anywhere. Yeah. No, in St. Louis, Missouri. What? A few weeks later, AT and T matched Bell's uh, offering. So that's interesting. Okay. With this service, an estimated five thousand customers placed approximately thirty thousand calls each week. That's pretty impressive, right? Way back in '46. Yeah. So if you wanted a mobile telephone service in your vehicle, you had to install about a thirty-six kilogram piece of equipment so it's about 700 pounds it's something like that but really that's <sighs> wow. what almost 90 pounds give or take yeah or 80 something like that's that that's a pretty that's big nuts. yeah other limitations of the system only three radio channels were available which meant only three customers in any city could make a call at one time <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> it was expensive costing approximately 15 dollars per month plus an additional 30 to 40 cents per local call in today's dollars, that's nearly two hundred dollars per month, and four to five dollars per local call. That's crazy! Isn't that nuts? And again, this was all analog too. Yeah. So that's why you talk about the channels being available. Right. So eventually, AT and T came up with IMT service, the improved mobile telephone service, which fixed some of the issues. But there were reports that customers were waiting thirty minutes or longer to place a call. Like especially when you were in a place like New York City where there's all sorts yeah. of people, there were so, um, still only so many dedicated lines. It got to a point where state governments were forced to restrict service to just 40,000 customers across the entire system. Fun fact for you about the history some more. Shoot. In the USSR, Leo, Leonid? Le Leonid? Yeah, you can got it. That's it. Kaprayanovich, yep, that's an it. engineer from Moscow, developed and presented a number of experimental pocket-sized communication radios. The weight of one model presented in 1961 was only 70 grams and could fit in your palm. So I would call that to be, like, really the first, like, oh, cell phone yeah. that we'd know. Question for you. Shoot. Who is the most famous person in the USSR? I would say either Zangief from Street Fighter or... Ivan Drago from oh, Rocky IV. Oh, Ivan Drago by far, because I have no idea who that first person oh, was that you, you mentioned. Street Fighter? Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, he, you've never played Street Fighter? Yeah, but I don't remember the names. Yeah, I'm not, big I'm scar not, I'm, or I'm, maybe I'm, hair on his I'm chest. Not, I'm not a gaming nerd like you. you. Ivan, which is the best Rocky movie? Oh, by far, though, uh, with the Russian. With uh, Rocky IV? Yeah, with Drago. Yeah. Okay, that's that's fair. I feel like Rocky One's just the worst. Like, he loses. And he's all, like, out of shape, and, like, he doesn't look like a boxer yeah. necessarily. He still speaks almost normal. Yeah. All right, so that's all I wanted to do with history up until what I call cell phones as we know them. Do you have anything else until, like, I don't know, 1G shows up? I always rely on you for the history, so I don't have much. Okay, so let's take a break right now for this right week's now. word from our sponsor. So I'm assuming it's either, like, Samsung, Apple, Kia Sera. Actually, AT&T found out that not only do I use their plan for my cellular device, but Ooh. I also am a major big-time stockholder. So okay. they decided to sponsor, not to sponsor us. us. Not at all. <laughs> right. Yeah. But we do not have any shout-outs either. What? Yeah. Why don't you save shout-outs? Like, I feel like some episodes we two. do, like, six of them, and then, like, some we do none. Well, this gives us more time to talk about people emailing us. Yes. Email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. If and you subscribe, give us ideas, whatever, we'll hook you up with amazing stickers. Yeah, and nothing says professional like a Gmail email address. That's... Right? <laughs> <laughs> nothing says unprofessional like it. Hey, how about this as a shout out? Shoot. One of my one of my bestest friends just had his second baby Sweet. and the first picture of him holding the baby I saw was in the green unprofessional engineering <sighs> the monkey, monkey t-shirt. Nice. 
Nice. Yeah, so represent a new listener right nice. there. Nice. I love um, it. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you write reviews. Reviews are basically, I heard someone say this. I heard a podcast say this before, and reviews and ratings are the currency of podcasts. So the more you review us, the more you, uh, even if it's not a great review, just if you have more reviews, you end up showing up in front of more people. Only and give us ratings. great reviews, please. Oh, yeah. I mean, wow. I couldn't imagine anything other than like a 4.5. That's neat, though, the currency of yeah. podcasts. Yeah. That's that's a good point. And like Last social, I saw, we yeah. were up over 96. Nice. I guess not over. We were at 96. Well, it's, you so were, that's pretty good. Almost at our goal of 100 where there we can go. then retire because exactly. that's when you get paid. That's not. Not how it works. No, it's not. Okay, moving on. So we talked about your friend in 1973, yep. Martin. Yep. Uh, so now let's move past that. <laughs> Look, I had this whole thing. Martin Cooper, uh, he made a call placed to Dr. Joel Engel of Bell Labs. <laughs> so now that was that was no G's the network. Yeah, it was all analog. It was there was all no analog. yeah. And the other so, so the other thing too we got to back up and say Ooh. is technically there are two types of phones right there now. Two, two, two types of mobile phones. There's there the one is one that my parents have in their house that's connected to the wall and then <laughs> because there's the they one don't in my they pocket. don't know how to charge. They don't know how, <laughs> they they get nervous and they take it off the charger. So there's technically two types of cell phones nowadays and I didn't even know they made these ones anymore. There's what they call a feature phone. What's this? So before smartphones so before the Samsung Galaxies and before the Apple iPhones, um, the phone that you had before that, your little flip phone. Uh, oh, yeah. The fl- flip phone. Flip phone. Flip, flip My phone. My Motorola. Like the Razor is a oh, perfect that a example. Big one. That was. That. So that was, it was funny, they, they consider the Razor more of, it was kind of a cross between technology and like apparel, like it was the way it looked and felt it was more important than there actually was a being lot a to good it. phone. Like Do you remember how cool everyone was if they had that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so those are considered feature phones, and those are phones that um, don't have the processing power of like a Samsung Galaxy or like an, I, or like an iPhone, and they still make a lot of these. Apparently... Fun fact, feature phones uh, are are almost exclusively used in uh, like any illegal activities where they're using cell phones. Oh, yeah, burner phones. Yeah, they, yeah. Why do you know about burner phones? <laughs> so I'm going to put this out there. In my line of work, <laughs> when I'm working with all of our high-profile sponsors, I need to use burner phones so that our dealings can't be tracked. <laughs> <laughs> I did so, say that rather matter you, of fact. You did, huh? you did. So burner <laughs> phones uh, or those those pay-as-you-go phones, phones, you see, track phones, these are feature phones that work just like a regular phone. You can typically do basic things like, you know, like calling and drugs. texting. And that's it. But yeah, it's 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 drug deals. It's it's it's, it's illegal stuff. It's, it's you know, not it's, always that. It's laundering money it's through a podcast. That. I mean, that's, that's usually what it is. laundering money through a podcast. So that's what these phones are. Okay. Uh, that's and then fair. the phones that you and I use nowadays, and this is the majority of the phones, iPhone or anything else. Anything else. It's similar to an iPhone. These are called smartphones, and okay. these are phones that connect you to the internet. These are phones that you know have typically assistants built into them. So you know, hey Google or you know whatever your you know thing is that you're using i don't want to say mine because she'll turn on in the other room yeah, if i say it that's fair um so they're smartphones so th- 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 there's a clear difference between the two of them um and also what they're used for one is oh, for drugs and illegal stuff and one is for watching game of thrones <laughs> there we go i don't so. use mine for either of those but oh, okay okay all right so can we talk about g's we can talk about G's. Like the OG. The OG's. Much we, like Luke, the OG. We can talk about G's. And I still don't understand the G's completely. So my understanding is the G, starting with one G as a cell network, the G just is short for generation. Is See, that not what more, you it's understood? Boring. Yeah, so it's, I know. Well, I really I thought, thought it was, was going to, to be it. more, too. And I like actually Googled it to make sure because yeah. that's, that's all you need to do is look at Wikipedia. And G is for generation. So the first generation cell phone network was 1G. Analog. Now, I wonder if it was called 1G back then. I doubt it. My guess or is now we just kind of moved it. Yeah. yeah. So 1G refers to the first automated analog cellular network around the world. 1G was first deployed in Tokyo in 1979. That was a long time ago. I wasn't even born yet. You weren't. No. 70 to 79. Uh, so when my I, brother was born. I was He's old. Uh, 40. S- 75. Um, yeah, I was I was probably 
Maybe still in diapers. I mean, you're a slow learner, so <laughs> I, I would. I bet learner. if I asked your mom, she'd be like, "Oh yeah, it's till 17." <laughs> <laughs> it took two more years before 1G technology was introduced into America. Yep. So in North America, the first 1G network was called the Advanced Mobile Phone System, or AMPS. A M P S. Do you remember seeing that on your cell phone? Vaguely. Yeah, me too. Vaguely. I don't know why. I guess it took a while for it to go away with the other Gs. So not so fun fact for you. Hmm. This network suffered from major security issues. Oh, yeah. The network was unencrypted and easily vulnerable for eavesdropping by basic scanner use. How, how crazy is well, that? Because it was analog. I get it, but it's like, yeah, you just could get hacked all the time. Hacked? Yeah, but just I, listen see, to. I don't I don't do anything that I got to worry about being hacked. Well, that's why I have burner phones now. Okay. Okay. Uh, moving on, do you have more? Do you have more on 2Gs and 3Gs and all those Gs? So in 1991 uh, is right about when the 2G started. It's and not the OG anymore. It's, it's not the, the OG. So this is whenever it transitioned from uh, analog to digital. Uh, and this is a crazy story. So my wife and I are, are, are dating. Uh, she has this crazy old Motorola. It was the gray Motorola with the black floppy antenna that goes in and out and the, the, the thing pulls out and the, the keypad's right there. I, yeah. So this was back in, oh, geez, probably early 2000s. She still had this. It was an analog Motorola phone, and it got to the point where there's no more analog anymore. And I forget what year it was, and, there, and she, she went to go get a new phone. And they're like, your phone plan's like $9 a month, and you own the phone. She's like, we don't do this anymore. It's like, we, we, you have to buy a new phone. Yeah. This phone will not work as of this date because it's purely digital. Because she had it so long? Because she had it so long. <laughs> uh, and, and, it was, and I remember I was, I was with her whenever we were dating, and she had to go buy this, this new phone. And she, and she went from like this $10 a month plan. And, it, and, you know, cell phones back in the day, the plans were kind of all over the place. Uh, and she moved up to like a 50 or $60 oh month plan. Goodness, that's funny. She was They're beside so expensive herself. Now. Yeah, I, we still have the phone. It's sitting in the closet. We, we, we kept it's like it. It's a relic. It's a definite relic. Wow. Like, like, like our daughter saw it and didn't know what it was. She thought it was a remote for the TV. Yeah, I could see that. So more on that. Like you said, it was in like 1991 or so. Ish. So old amps networks were replaced by D amps, digital amps. So by 2008, and this makes sense why I still remember AMPS showing up on my phone, all AMPS services were shut down across North America. So 2008, that other one lasted till. So that had a pretty good run. Yeah. Fun fact about 2G, though, which Shoot. I think is probably the most important thing about cell phones. I do. I agree 2G with this one. 2G allowed for basic SMS communications. So Texting. The, the world's first SMS text message was sent in Finland in 1993. Why? Why are the Finns like? Isn't Nokia or Kia Sara or one of them or both of them in Finland? I wonder why they're so involved with phone technology. Finland, a know. lot of stuff happened in Finland with phones. Yeah, I never, never thought about it. So around this time, the IBM Simon was released. Why do we care? It was actually the first smartphone way back in 1993. That blows my mind because yeah. I don't remember smartphones I've... until after my BlackBerry, which was, I mean less than 10 years ago i vaguely remember the simon do blackberries count as smartphones because they were not very smart no, they were terrible they were so bad i guess that's why they went out of business I palm think. pilot and all that sort of stuff yeah those were the worst so simon was a calendar an address book a clock a notepad a pda a public display of affection no no oh personal uh, digital assistant ah there we go email service and had a Q-W-E-R-T-Y keyboard and a touch screen all rolled into one. So I had to look what that keyboard was, but it's basically just what a keyboard yeah, is. Yeah, QWERTY or whatever yeah. that means. Like there's different layouts. Guess the cost. $750. Pretty good. 899 on a two-year contract or 1099 without a contract. That's actually not that bad considering the X right now is a grand. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I can't even imagine. I'm glad I don't pay for cell phones. Yeah, me too. Put that out there. 3G? So, so 3G. So this was somewhere around 2001. So mm -hmm. it was quite a bit. It was like 10 years, a little over 10 years uh, yeah, of dealing with... that's a long with, stretch, right? It's a very long stretch, considering it seems to be happening at a greater pace now. But mm -hmm. yeah, so about 10 years, they moved to 3G. Uh, and I really don't and have Tokyo much on... Tokyo again. What's that? Tokyo again. Yeah, Tokyo. And, and, and I don't have much on it other than just all this means is just they're, they're expanding bandwidth. 
fewer dropped calls, the capacity of the networks were better, the speed of the networks keep on increasing. So um, I think 3G is right around whenever uh, the, the smartphones were having, you know, all the internet capabilities. So being able to like watch movies and, you know, kind of do different, you know, lots of downloads and uploads from your phone. Right. And um, I think I think it was more that the reason that was available on these 3G smartphones was because it moved it moved where 2G to 3D, from 2G to 3G, where 3G used packet switching instead of circuit switching to transfer the data. I knew that, of course, packets. Well, it, basically, it's what you were just saying, though. Uh, media streaming and things like that over mobile networks was now fast enough that it was actually usable, yeah. as opposed to 2G, which was it was just so slow that mm-hmm. you wouldn't be able to do that sort of thing. By 2007... There were 295 million 3G users around the world. It seems, seems like, like a lot, right? It does. It does. It feels like a lot to me. So not long after that, 4G showed 4G, up. 4G, but 2009-ish. Yeah. So 4G's main improvements over 3G technology is that it was its data optimization. So again, that's... I mean, I think that's what I use still, right? And 4G? now they have like 4G LTE right. and all these other things. So this offered super fast speeds up to 10 times faster than existing 3G networks. Two different 4G technologies were created, the WiMAX standard and the more popular LTE standard. So, and I think that has to do with America versus Europe as well, yeah. which is used where. So before we get into 5G fun facts and some other stuff, let's take a break for this week's Luke's Rant. So here's my rant. Uh, I think I made this one before, so James is probably going to pick on me for this. Probably. But, so do you think the person that invented the car phone was like, okay, let's take this you know, one-ton vehicle with a person behind the wheel and take their hand off the wheel and have them talking on a phone? Like That makes sense for a, a driver to be distracted. Do you think I that person know. feels guilty about like They're creating... probably dead by now. They've probably gotten a car. You know, accident. it's like it's like why not put like an ice cream dispenser in a car? It's like oh, I feel oh like having gosh. ice cream. Ooh, that you know. is the best idea. That would be a great idea. Yeah. Or a popcorn machine. It's like I seriously. Don't like popcorn. So so here's my rant, and this is like your pu- public service announcement. The more you know, kind of thing from We're unprofessional like engineering. Yeah, from we, Uncle Luke. We love all the peoples, and we want to make sure all the peoples are safe and sound. True. Uh, if you use your phone when you're driving, I mean. It's you're kind of you're kind of dumb. I'm going to put this out there. As I drove over here, I was on a meeting on my cell phone, but not holding it. Holding my cell phone. Okay. And I had my Zoom app open so you're, that I could see the presentation. You're dumb. I I should probably yeah. be dead. Yeah, you probably should be. So, I mean, I <laughs> I just I mean, the, the fact that there isn't some kind of and I, I know I did this one before. The fact there isn't some kind of legislation Legi- some states have legislation, it. yeah. Um, but where they in they make either automotive manufacturers have some kind of device that disables the phone when it's in motion, or phone manufacturers like Apple. How hard would it be to take the GPS of an Apple and say, hey, if this thing is moving more than five miles an hour or three miles an hour, because most of it happens whenever you're in traffic, so you probably want it to be like not moving at all. The phone can't work. In, in anything other than a hands-free mode. You've, you've never gotten that pop-up that says, hey, it looks like you're driving or you're in the vehicle. Should I shut this off? And then I said, no, and never show this again. And, and that's exactly what I did. I could see that happening in the not-so-distant I think, future. I think they need Automotive to do something. Automotive people or someone will be required to do that. Yeah. I could see that. I, I, and they'll, they'll allow speaking still, yeah. but hands-free yeah, It only. has to be totally hands-free. Like the phone itself can't be physically moving. Right. And, and the reason why this has become more important, my daughter's going to be turning 13 here in a few months, and, and the thought of her— Pass it by then. The the thought of her being 16 years old and driving a car and even talking hands-free makes me nervous. But especially if she had a phone or was texting is just mind-blowing to me. That See, that's we were something. better. Kids these days. Yeah. Yeah. Helmets. 5G. 5G. So 5G, uh, it's not here yet. I, I, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so what I got from 5G was, here's what I got. You ready? Uh, should we roll on out in 2020? Yeah, so I think it's rolled out in some places, maybe. Oh, testing, more yeah, than Yeah, testing, probably Tokyo, Never because why Pittsburgh. wouldn't that be the way it is? According to Gizmodo, 5G networks will have the capability to transfer speeds 10 times faster than those of 4G. Shockingly, shockingly to all, Verizon has said that 5G will deliver speeds 200 times faster than 4G LTE. 200? Wow. Really? 200? Wow. That's probably faster than, like, my internet's. 
But yeah, good it for could them. be. But yeah, you're right. So it's not here, but we keep talking about it anyways, right? So what else do you got? Okay. All I have is amazing fun facts. Okay, so another. So we've been talking about cell phones, but modern day cell phones. And I'm talking smartphones. I'm not talking your burner phones that you have like <laughs> cases of apparently. Uh, but smartphones. My trunk's just filled. With. These things wouldn't exist without a SIM card. Yeah. And and, and I, I I never realized what a SIM card actually did or was and i even knew what it stood for either so mobile phones nowadays require a small microchip it's called a subscriber identity module or sim card uh, in order to function so all phones nowadays have sim cards um sim cards are approximately the size of postage stamp they're super small like on your not iPhone. even the size of a postage like, like, stamp. like when you look on the side of your so your, your, your your iphone there's a little pinhole and there's a little card that goes in. yeah it's like the size of your pinky they're nail tough to get thing. out they're very difficult yeah. to get out, um, and what they what they do is they make sure that they're responsible for the security. So it stores the subscriber identification key, and this is what authenticates. So when you pick up your phone and, and I'm calling as me with that particular SIM card, the key on that SIM card authenticates that that is me making that call, and it's not you know just some random person you know, that maybe stole the phone or whatever right. kind of thing. So, uh, and phones just, they would not work um, if you didn't have them. And this is what makes it possible to just take your SIM card out of one phone and put it in another I phone. I think they work in some limited capacity, but yeah. Yeah, that's great though, that you can yeah. just swap them between phones, yeah. right? That's so like when nice. you upgrade from one phone to another phone, you can just swap the SIM card. I don't, but you could. I don't either. Yeah. Yeah, my guess is my SIM card's probably being used by uh, some it person probably in another is. I don't country. think I've ever gotten rid of So one. I got a couple other things before we wrap it up here. So this one I thought was super interesting. So this was the, the vendor market share worldwide. This and is nuts. This was surprising to me, actually, because like I'm a big Apple fan, um, and I just assumed everybody has iPhones, right? And I thought Apple was going to be the clear leader yeah. in manufacturers, but they're not. And I think and I think they're doing something wrong. So they're not Samsung, making burner phones. They're not making burner phones. Samsung, they are clearly the number one leader in uh, mobile oh. vendor market share worldwide with 31% of all cell That's phones. A lot. That's crazy. That's a big lead, too. That's a huge lead because Apple comes in at a poultry 23%. And I think the problem is, if you look at Samsung, they have kind of um, an array of phones. Like, you can pick, like, currently they make, like, five or six or ten different phones right now. I Where think, Apple has one. Yeah. That's well, their primary phone. Yeah. I think Samsung, they might not anymore, but I think at one point they actually made parts for the Apple iPhone stuff, too. Like, they wouldn't weren't just making it. cell phones. They were making pieces for the other ones as I well. I wouldn't doubt Which it. is weird. So Apple comes in second place at 23, and then there is a ridiculous bunch of names that are way small percentages that I can't pronounce. <laughs> these are all those burner phones. Uh, they're, most of these are made uh, in, in Indonesia and in, in Taiwan and in, in China, and, and I, most of the names I, I, I can't pronounce. Okay. Um, so clearly. The next fact that I thought was super crazy, so – Back in 1997, so this is... This is where I thought you were going before. Yeah. This is crazy. So this is mobile phone subscriber per 100 people. So for every 100 people, how many of them actually have a phone? So back in 1997, in the United States, every 20 people, so 20% of the people in the United States had uh, a phone, which that seems kind of high in 97 to me, because I know yeah. I didn't have one. I did not either. I was uh, still a wee lad. Um, and when you look at um, the rest of the world, it's in the neighborhood of like two or three percent, right? Yeah, and if you look small. at developing countries, nobody has a phone because yeah. they don't have the infrastructure or the network to support it. Fast forward to let's just pick uh, 2007. In 2007, so just whatever years that was, 10 years, it goes up to almost 90 percent of all Americans have a cell phone. Cell phone. So nine out of 10 or 90 out of a uh, hundred. I'm sorry. I looked at the wrong one. In 1997, in 10 years, everybody has more than one phone apiece. So this just is over one per person. Yeah, one in per the person. Developed nations. So this, so this is like our friend Ananda. He has like his work phone and then his does. personal phone. So he has two. He phones probably has on a few him. burner phones too. I'm sure he has a couple burner yeah. phones. Uh, the rest of the world back in 2007 was like 40 percent somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, and now 2014 was the most recent stat I could find, and I find this shocking. 
is in the United States, uh, for every 100 people, they have 120 phones. So that means every two, that means 20 people have two phones at least. Yeah. And the rest of the world is right underneath 100 now. So almost even in developing nations, it's just at like what 90? Yeah, probably 90 about something ni- 90 percent. Wow. Um, and, and it's and, and the, the the what I read about that particular developing stat was comp- countries like India. In India. Everybody, it's their primary means of communication because they can't rely on the the, the actual telephone lines themselves, the hard lines. Um, so everybody relies on cell towers and cell phones. So that's why that's so high. Nice. Do you have some time for some fun facts? I sure hope so. Okay, fun facts for you. I'm just going to rattle these suckers off, and you can see if you're impressed or not. In 2012, Apple sold more than 340,000 iPhones per day. That's more than, or that's roughly four phones per second. That's crazy. I got one. One out of every three robberies involves cell phone theft. Eh, that's pretty good. Cell phones have 18 times more bacteria than toilet seats. Oh. Oh, toilet handles. I'm sorry. That's disgusting. Yeah. Next one. The average user replaces their mobile phone every 11 to 18 months. Mm, I am not the average user. I I keep mine until it's basically dead. I can't stand changing phones in japan 90 percent of cell phones are waterproof really mm-hmm. fun fact according to data from some company called flipsy uh <laughs> the typical reliable. smartphone including equipment billing usage apps over a lifetime is going to cost the average user seventy five thousand dollars so upgrading paying for the service things you're going to download and pay for 75 grand over the lifetime of a phone. One cell phone is going one, to cost no, no, one person. So you will oh. spend $70,000 on a phone okay. for your life. I can believe that. That seems somewhat reasonable. Yeah, that's a lot, but when you actually put the number to it, ouch. I got some not so fun facts. Oh, I have some more fun facts. Okay, shoot. Present well, I don't know about the the whole toilet handle one. Uh, present day cell phones have more computing power than the computer used for Apollo 11 to land on the moon. I hear that one a lot. Yeah. In Britain, more than 100,000 cell phones are dropped in the toilet every every year. <sighs> Gross Brits. Yeah. More than 90% of adults have their cell phones within arm's reach at all times. I would say I probably fall into that category. I would agree. Three more for me. According to the Guinness World Records, the S-O-N-I-M, Sonim, XP-33004, Force is recognized as the toughest phone, survived an 84-foot drop with no operational damage. Hmm. Cell phones. Cell phone users spend the majority of their times on games, 49%, and then social networks, 30%. I'm social. I don't do any games. And my last one, you don't do any games? Not a one. The iPhone 5 Black Diamond is the most expensive phone, at least it was at this time, in the world, costing $15 million and taking nine weeks to build. The phone is made of 135 gram solid gold of 24 carats, and the chassis was inlaid with 600 white diamonds. Who does that? That's so stupid. You're upgrading every 18 months. What what, 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 what do you do with that phone? Okay, (laughs) so I got some not-so-fun facts. So the demand for uh, metal used in mobile phones and other electronics, primarily mobile phones, fueled the Second Congolese War, where an estimated 5.5 million lives were lost. Uh, Unfortunately, these deep mines uh, in the eastern Congo are typically mined by children that have to extract the materials necessary for the electronics industry and the booming um, uh, cell phone industry. And it's horrible. The the materials they're mining are are, are typically terrible for you. Recycling. Listen to our recycling episode. E-cycling, we talk yeah. about e-cycling, but phones, they're, they're difficult to recycle. Most people just keep them or, you know, they're, they're sitting in their, you know, uh, their closet and they get a new one less than every two years. Um, next unfortunate fun, not so fun fact is uh, back in May 2016, there was a long-term study that suggested that the radio frequency or RF radiation that is emitted by all cell phones can cause cancer. I always wonder that, especially with where I usually uh, have my Most cell phone Most people sit placed, on their cell phone. So, yeah. yeah. I know when you're driving, that's, that's what yeah. I do. Me too. Uh, so I have a super short game. I know we're a okay. couple minutes over here, but super short game. Uh, you kind of answered already, but what three things do you use your phone for and what order do you do it? S- well, games... Is number one. You use that Not prob- my phone, but my iPad. But okay. So well, let's stick with me? phones, yeah. I use phone. Actually, no, making no, no. Calls. I use my phone for text messaging the most, 
followed by not social media. Social media. Social media number two. I wow. use my iPad for okay, that. Okay. Followed by uh, phone calls. Okay. Mine Only is because of meetings. Otherwise, mine, I would never talk. Mine is clearly social media, uh, number one. Uh, texting, number two, and then phone calls. So me and you are flip flopping on the social. And, yeah. Um, yeah, but if I didn't have an iPad, then I would definitely use my phone more for social. Do you? Last one. Do you trust your phone for mobile banking? Like, do you feel it's safe and you're putting in your PIN number and all that sort of stuff? The question is, does my wife trust me with banking? Okay, never mind. <laughs> so I use mine for mobile banking okay, quite a she bit. She uses ours for that. Okay. Yeah. So you trust hers. it? Well, I trust her, so she trusts it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're gonna get a big kiss when you get home i should if she listened all right hopefully everybody thought that our cell phone episode was interesting if nothing else you know that g stands for generation yep until next time see ya